Hey everybody, it's Tasso Ocean Caleb with RF Elements, and today we'll be going over our 6 gigahertz wideband antenna product introduction, and we'll be talking about our new symmetrical horns, our new ultra dishes, and even our new twist port adapters for 6 gigahertz. So today's agenda for this webinar, we'll be talking about many different topics. We'll be talking about the 6 gigahertz unlicensed band for fixed wireless access, the challenges people are seeing or will see in 6 gigahertz, our technology, uh, our, obviously our new products, some new tools like our spec check tool, which is something pretty cool. And then finally, we'll end it with product availability and pricing. So the FCC recently opened up the Uni 5 and Uni 7 bands for 6 gigahertz operation in the U.S. for access points and client devices. This is about, what, 850 megahertz of new spectrum that WISPs will be able to use in the United States. In Canada, they opened up Uni 6, which is even more spectrum, and hopefully the rest of the world will adopt some of these new changes in their regions as well. Yeah, there's a ton of free spectrum, 850, 950 megahertz of open spectrum for WIS to use for fixed wireless access outside, which is awesome. We're, we're totally pumped about that. But there are some challenges in using the band that it's important that people take into consideration. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about some of those challenges that we'll see in a 6 gigahertz band. So I think the, the first challenge we're going to see... Uh, with 6 gigahertz is, again, kind of the misconception of the fallacy that the spectrum is actually clean. Yes, there's 850 megahertz of new spectrum for us to use, but really, you know, the 6 gigahertz band has been used for years by licensed incumbents that are running point-to-point -point links that might be going, you know, through your area right now. I mean, there is the AFC that will help guide you so that way you don't step over or deploy, let's say, in an azimuth or at some certain power levels that will interfere uh, with these licensed incumbents. But we really have to kind of pay attention uh, how we deploy 6 gigahertz moving forward. You know, we can't repeat, you know, a, a lot of the mistakes that happened with 5 gigahertz, right, where people were deploying, you know, uh, very wide, sloppy sectors, omnis even back in the day. Uh, people were running channels that were super wide at that time, right, and, and very uh, ineffective. The radios didn't even do a good job of running back then 80 megahertz or 100 megahertz channels, but people were running it anyway and wasting spectrum. So I think with the high rate of deployments that we should see in 6 gigahertz, it's very, very important that you know we are responsible on how we utilize that 850 megahertz of spectrum from day one. Yeah, you're 100% right. You know, access to clean spectrum has been a major issue for WIS basically the entire time, right? So we have a, a wonderful opportunity here to utilize a space, and it's going to be wide open in a lot of areas, but we can't take it for granted. We can't take and deploy uh, with the ways that we were in 5 gig over the years and repeat a lot of those same mistakes. So it's a great opportunity, but we've got to be very mindful of what we're doing and make sure that we do a good job and don't step all over ourselves in the process. Yeah, this is definitely some some good points. You know, the the second challenge now that we're going to have to deal with is, you know, the, the 6 gigahertz band is placed, you know, right next to 5 gigahertz. And with the new Wi-Fi 7 standard coming out, you know, we really need to uh, pay a lot of attention to the antennas themselves because operating in 5 and 6 gigahertz is is a challenge for the antenna designers uh, and even the, the radios themselves, right? You know, when we're covering... 2200 megahertz of spectrum we need to make sure that the antenna radiation patterns are you know uniform across the entire spectrum we need to ensure that the gain is as flat as possible across both spectrums right five and six gigahertz uh, vswr all these things are really an enormous challenge when uh trying to design an antenna that that operates that wide right so we we, we need to make sure that you know yeah, we're looking at all the specs and uh, know that, you know, not all antennas are created equal just because, you know, the antenna works from, you know, the lower five into the upper six isn't enough and not all antennas are equal. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's, you know, it's one thing when you're developing something like an indoor access point, you've got a rubber duck antenna or an integrated antenna, and you're dealing with using a wideband radio, but you're only physically covering the area of one room, you know, a pretty small footprint. When you move all this to the outdoor space, and now you go from a room to a cell that might be several miles or kilometers long, then all these considerations really have to come into play, you know, making sure those beams are balanced, so on and so forth. And in the design phase, you know, we talked a lot about, well, why don't we just 
keep it focused on six. We have an excellent suite of five gig products already. So why don't we make it where it's just dialed in specifically to six? And we could, uh, but really we're, we're really taking a, a look towards the future long term. You know, Wi-Fi seven is definitely a thing that's going to be coming down the road that we'll see utilizing the outdoor space and other proprietary systems as well will be developed. That'll be covering the whole band. So it was important to be able to capitalize on this from a design phase as we look towards the future. I'm not just this year or next year, but many years down the road. Yeah, there's definitely uh, a lot of things that uh, need to be considered. And I think, you know, this this next challenge is really uh, link budget. This is something that is totally different in 6 gigahertz and how you approach your deployments than it was in, in 5 gigahertz. So we, you know, we have the AFC system, right? And this is to help us, uh, you know, plan our deployment so that way we don't interfere with the incumbents that are out there. This is pretty important. Um, and the AFC not only will let you know uh, what channels can be used, but the biggest thing is it's going to control the power output of your radio. So there's some some big differences here. Uh, you know, unlike five gigahertz uh, and the the AFC, the output power that's used on the CPE side is also capped at either you know the the 30 uh, dBm or or 36 you know EIRP, and uh, it's all automated now. So the actual AFC will tell the radio. Hey, this is the power that you can use. These are the frequencies that are available, so on and so forth. So it's really, really different uh, when you consider how 5 gigahertz ran. You're either in DFS and you're running 30 uh, EIRP, or you're not in DFS up in the Uni 3 and you had a 36 EIRP at the access point with practically unlimited power on the CPE side. So the AFC is going to dictate a lot of this stuff. And the, the other thing to really uh, take note is that it's really paying attention to kind of the power densities of these channels. So, you know, a lot of people want to run these wider channels. What you were finding out is that, you know, the, the narrow channels actually have uh, lower power outputs than the wider channels do, right? So this is something that's totally different. Uh, it's going to take some time to get used to. And I think the, the best thing to do is, you know, click the link below and use the Cambium AFC tool that's out there. Uh, and this will help you get an idea of what your area looks like before you deploy. And that way you'll see what kind of power restrictions you may or may not have and frequency restrictions. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, one of the things that I've seen playing around with the tool and talking to other operators as well as, you know, it's hard to guess where these existing incumbent links are, right? So you're like, well, I'm in the middle of nowhere. There's no other operators, you know, using these links. So it shouldn't cause me any problems. And then they run through the tool and say, hey, wait a minute. I see that my output powers are dropped a lot of places and a lot of different bands or maybe completely opposite. It might be completely wide open where you thought there'd be a lot of things here. So, you know, it's really hard to say because it's not just WISP operators that are using these incumbent six gig links. It's the, the cell providers is the county you know, safety departments could be anybody that are using these existing microwave links so again it's really important to do your planning and look at the radio when you fire up the radio and you put in your frequency uh options see what they say or play with the tool or just other do a little bit of planning and, and know what it's going to do for you in the real world and what it's going to actually look like when you go to deploy so let's take some time and we'll talk about our technology so you know rf elements you know always built its product based on, you know, these three pillars, noise rejection, right? Making sure that antennas had, you know, uh, highly suppressed or non-existent uh, side lobes, right? Uh, our waveguide twist port interface, right? Making sure that it's, uh, you know, virtually lossless. So it's, it's highly efficient and therefore giving you the best efficiency for transmitting power. And making sure this, this entire ecosystem gives you really massive scalability because it's really important for WISP to be able to grow and scale up as you know, time goes on. So noise interference has always been an issue for WIPs, not only in the existing 5 gig, but now moving into the 6 gigahertz band. So it's very important to make sure you have an antenna that has a very high beam efficiency. And this is done by suppressing the side lobes and ensuring that the majority of the energy that comes out of the antenna is in the main beam only. 
Yeah, and anyone who's been listening to us for the last, I don't know, 10 plus years or so, like this is not a new message. This is the same message we've been preaching this whole time, and it's going to be applicable to 6 gig and above, you know, just as much as it is 5 gig. Maybe not today, but, you know, the, the problem of interference in this band will occur as more and more users add on to it. So it's super important to make good decisions now and protect yourself in the future. I also think that some things, you know, that's very important to understand is our twist port connector. This is something that uh, is kind of misunderstood in the industry and what the difference is. So the twist port connector is our proprietary waveguide connector. It's nothing more than a quick locking mechanism to attach the radio to an antenna port. You know, we've encouraged radio manufacturers uh, for many years to, you know, standardize on this waveguide interface you know, and replace the connectors that are on most of the two by two radios that are out there. Uh, the waveguide connector, you know, introduces very little loss or near zero loss when it's done right. And this lossless system really helps uh, the radios and antenna interface be highly efficient. So there's, uh, you know, very low loss or near zero loss if done correctly. Now our twist port adapter is just that it's an adapter which converts you know the existing connectorized two by two radios into a waveguide interface these are not zero loss they're very low loss because they have pigtail connectors on the inside as this is the only way to convert a connectorized radio into a waveguide fed radio so this is the big difference between the connector and an adapter for the waveguide systems so those of you familiar with the twist port adapters in the past, you know, this is the same ecosystem we're sticking with, with the wideband antennas. They work great. Um, we'll have a couple of different radio options. You know, the EPMP, which we'll show you here in a little bit, uh, will be the primary one uh, that we launch with. And if you're not familiar with the twist port adapters, basically it allows you to take the radio, click it into the adapter, which then clicks onto the horn or antenna itself. Really easy to use, um, protects the connectors from environmental issues, birds, weathering, UV, so on and so forth. So Twistboard Adapter has done a lot to sort of revolutionize the way that people are attaching their radios to the antennas, makes it really easy to install in the field, fix and replace, swap radios to swap to another generation of style of radio. So it's an extremely uh, effective tool and uh, people love it. So now we'll move on to actually talking about the new wideband antennas that we have coming out, like our new symmetrical horn series and our ultra dish series. When we look at antenna performance, we can see that our 5 gigahertz asymmetrical horns operate from the lower 5 to about 6 gigahertz. Our 5 gigahertz symmetrical horns operate from the lower 5 to about 6.4 gigahertz. And we have a few 5 gigahertz antennas like our symmetrical 30, our ultra horn, and our ultra dishes that work from the lower 5 to about 6.8 gigahertz. Now our new wideband symmetrical horns and our new wideband ultra dish work from 4.9 all the way up to 7.1 gigahertz. And I think it's important to note here is a good opportunity that the current 5 gigahertz antennas are not really going to be going anywhere either. We're still going to be producing these and they're still going to be for use in networks that may be always 5 gig, right? Uh, or it depends where you are regionally, you might not have access to the 6 gig band or necessarily need the new wideband antennas. So just want to let everyone know that the current 5 gig models are here to stay. This new wideband is an addition and it gives you a lot of flexibility for the future. With these new wideband antennas, you have a few different feed options to consider. You could use our existing twist port adapters with them from the lower five up to about 6.4 gigahertz. You could use some new twist port adapters that we have like the EPMP B6 and TPA SMA6, which are for six gigahertz operation and work from 5.7 to 7.1 gigahertz. Right, so the antennas will be wideband, covers the whole band. Right now, the adapters will be specific to the band, whether you're using the existing 5 gig adapters if you want to run in 5, you can run the new 6 gig adapters if you're running 6, and, you know, depending on how things go in the future, where the radios go in the future, there could be a lot of different potential new options. So, you know, and it is important to note, I think there's a lot more interoperability considerations and things like that to take into account than there were previously. So we've been working on a new tool to make it a little bit easier for you to make the right decisions and see all the compatibility compatibility and specs in one place with our cool new spec check tool. Yeah, our, our spec check tool is actually really cool and it'll allow you to match up any of our uh, twist port antennas with any of our twist port adapters and create a custom spec sheet for you that will show you uh, the beam angle at all frequencies, the VSWR, uh, the gain, 
and uh, all the different parameters uh, of a spec sheet for that particular setup. Yeah, it's going to allow you to really download the combined specs into a PDF. Um, so you've got all that information there. And it's important, you know, to make sure your compatibility is good. Uh, but there's also considerations that, like, a lot of people don't realize, like VSWR, right? Everyone's like, well, what's the VSWR of the standard Twistboard antenna? Well, without that interface from Coaxial to Waveguide, just the straight Waveguide that makes up that horn, you know, VSWR is not necessarily uh, an applicable number that makes a lot of sense. So to get a true VSWR reading, for instance, you really need to have the Twistboard adapter in use to the horn in use to get an accurate number. And the spec check tool is going to give you the ability to see that and lay it all out in one sort of coherent application so you've got all the information in front of you. Our new wideband antennas have a new industrial design, like we replaced all die-cast parts with marine-grade uh, aluminum. You know, they're very compact, they're very low weight, they have new mechanical features, and these improvements are really based on oh, no, almost a decade of feedback from our customers. They're also now made in the EU, so there's no more U.S. import tariffs. The cool thing, too, is we're making everything in-house now, effectively, or made in the EU. So it gives us a lot of flexibility on how we build products and how we launch new products. So, you know, we're releasing some new models now. As we release new models into the future, there's a lot of opportunity for feedback from the market and the users and everyone to say, hey, this is cool, but maybe we're looking for this, or maybe we have a new application. So it gives us a lot of flexibility and gives us the ability to be a lot more nimble about how we roll things out, which I think is pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, we've learned a lot uh, from the last 10 years of deployments and customer history, so on and so forth. And, you know, lab testing is one thing, but real world results is what really matters. And now that we've got all this history, as we've completely re-innovated the way that we manufacture, we have said, look, here's all this past history. Let's use that to uh, improve our testing mechanisms in this iterative design process. So things like wind tunnel testing, vibration testing, and uh, the salt tank chamber testing, you know, that's a big one too. You know, we've been able to learn from that, make better testing methods and protocols, and then use that to better iteratively design this new generation and develop and launch something that we're extremely proud of. Yeah, definitely. So let's roll into the introduction of our new symmetrical horn wideband antennas. So our new symmetrical horn wideband still has a very unique beam shape. It has the same elevation cut as it has in azimuth, so therefore it gives you a symmetrical beam pattern when it projects it out into the field. All our new antennas, you know, have wideband performance now, so we get, again, very flat gain across the entire usable spectrum from 4.9 up to 7.1 gigahertz in all of our symmetrical horn antennas. Our symmetrical horn widebands now have a new industrial design. We've incorporated a handle, so that way it's easier to carry up the tower, and we've integrated our UBR bracket system, giving you better azimuth and elevation uh, adjustments and mounting options. So the UBR bracket still gives you uh, the ability to adjust the bracket based on the pole diameter that you're using. So you can flip that back bracket for smaller or larger diameter poles. Along with the addition of the UBR bracket, we've now made it very easy in order to change the left or right side pole mounting mechanism by releasing the screw on that clip and then flipping it around from left to right. We've also received lots of customer feedback on utilizing our symmetrical horns for like micro pops or using it in venues like concerts and other things that require them to mount it on a horizontal pipe. So this new mounting mechanism now allows you to do that very easily by again, flipping the bracket into the horizontal position and then mounting on horizontal pipes. The ability to run SLAM45 is also a requirement for some radio manufacturers and this new mounting system makes that easy too. Yep, and all these different adjustment methods are all tied into how that collar mount is done, and it's all mechanically indexed. So super easy to use, uh, kind of fun, uh, and just another point of how we've been able to sort of change up this design and make it easier and more flexible to use in the field. So now let's talk about our new Wideband UltraDish product line. So the UltraDish Wideband has a very unique beam shape as well. Uh, the antenna is designed in a way to suppress side lobes as much as possible, giving you very high beam efficiency for a dish antenna. Along with that unique beam shape, we also have, again, very stable gain across the entire usable spectrum from 4.9 up to 7.1 gigahertz. 
We've also gone ahead and improved the industrial design for the Ultra Dish Wideband, giving you a bigger mount with more clamping force to ensure a more reliable connection to your pole. The installation process is still quick and easy and only requires two steps. You mount the bracket to the pole, flipping the brackets on the back based on which pole diameter you want to use. And then you easily drop the antenna into the mount and you adjust your azimuth and elevation and lock it in. Super simple still. We've also added the options for accessories like a ray dome cover that you can add if you require it. We've also added support for a side strut in case it's needed. Yeah, we're excited about the new Ultra Dish. It's got higher gain, which is something people have been asking for. The radome setup is simpler and will be less expensive, a lot easier to use than the existing radomes for the 27. Side strut support, really handy in those cases where you're dealing with some really harsh environments. And the doubling up on the mount as well, right? So, you know, bigger dish needs bigger environmental support options. And these are some of the things that we've implemented into this series. For sure, for sure. A bigger antenna requires bigger mounts and uh, a better apparatus. And finally, we have two new twist port adapters, the EPMP B6 for the 4600L and 4600C radio, and then the TPA SMA6 with two SMA connectors for all other radios. Both of these have a frequency range of 5.7 to 7.125 gigahertz and work with all of our new wideband antennas. So in terms of product availability and pricing, you can see here the Symmetric 30, the Ultra Dish 29, and the new twist port adapters are available now. The 60 Symmetric, the 90 Symmetric, the four pack iteration of the dish, which will be one dish, but a pack of four, uh, will be available later this quarter. And to kind of wrap up here, we will be doing a fun little promo. So the first shipments of horns and antennas that go out to the channel will have a uh, little voucher in it. And this voucher will have a customized QR code where if you take it, fill it out for that specific unit, we will then ship you a free EPMP adapter. So the TPA EPMP6, we're going to send you one of those for free. That'll work with the 4600C and 4600L radios. And we'll use this information to get feedback from the field and send you a free adapter. So we're pretty excited about this and looking forward to getting some of these out here as soon as possible. Well, thanks everybody for joining and watching our webinar. Uh, you should stay tuned for part two that will be coming out here in the near future when we'll be launching our new asymmetrical horn series. Yeah, we're super excited about that and all the other things that are to come. So stay tuned with more information soon. Bye. Bye.